<laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Garage Gear. I'm JB. All right, so do you have a snowblower that maybe doesn't throw as far or clogs up? Well, today I'm going to show you how to install an impeller kit on it so that way you can be the envy of all the neighbors, all right? So, ladies and gentlemen, your snowblower, after following these instructions, will throw snow twice as far and never clog up, even in the heavy, heavy, wet stuff that you may get during the winter, all right? Let's get to it. Okay, so here, let me show you on a quick little drawing and a little tutorial here what an impeller kit is and what it does. All right, so let's start off with the tube that is located pretty much in the middle of your snowblower. All right, so you have like this chute here that sticks out of it, right? And inside, you are going to have either three or four impellers that spin around, all right? And they spin around, and then the snow exits out your chute, which you rotate, and the snow spits out that way, okay? So, what you're going to do is, there's always a gap right here, right here, right here, right here, and as this impeller is spinning around, what happens is you start to get snow built up on the edges, around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, and eventually it just clogs up, and then that's what slows everything down, and your snowblower doesn't quite throw snow as far as it could, or your machine might just come to a complete grinding halt, and I've had that happen to me a couple of times, but once I did this, I never had this happen again. So here, let me show you what you do. You take a little piece of rubber. You could take the sidewall of a tire. You could take... Uh, I use a piece of a conveyor belt and I basically bolt it to each of the impellers and I usually put two bolts in each one and I put it pretty much right up to the edge of the housing of this tube or I may put it uh, maybe like a millimeter away like really really close all right and then I'm going to put one here and I'm going to bolt it down so as it's going around it's actually going to wipe everything on this edge completely clean and it's going to throw it right out and actually if you have any water sitting in there it'll throw that out as well so any slushy wet snow will come right out clean 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 on the inside of this tube ladies and gentlemen all right so the next step i've actually taken off the spark plug wire here so i, sh I shouldn't have any problems with this thing starting up on me or anything like that and when I look at the impellers on the inside of this snowblower, here's your impeller, all right? And as it comes around, and you can kind of see that there is a gap right in here. I can almost put my finger in there. A gap right inside, and that's where all the snow tends to get clogged up, especially if you have a rusty uh, set of impellers or if you have like a rusty uh, pipe everything's going to kind of start to bond up in there really quick. So what I've done is I've taken these little pieces of rubber, okay? It's pretty thick, probably a little wider than a quarter inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right up to that edge. This is about three and a half inches. This piece right here kind of curves up, so I'm not going to really worry about that. But what I'm going to do is just get this right up to that edge pretty much, maybe about a millimeter away, and I'm going to bolt it down with two bolts here and here. And then I'm going to do that on all four. Now, some people say you only have to do two, uh, one across from another. That's fine. I like to get really crazy and really have this thing just unload snow. So what I'm going to do is put one here, one here with a bolt. And I'm going to do this eight times because there's four impellers. So uh, this is going to take me about an hour and a half. And then we'll get it going. So the next question is, do I drill through this impeller piece of rubber or do I drill through the impeller itself first. I like to actually drill through the impeller first and then I'll match the holes up with a marker on here and then I'll place it. So, cause then I can kind of figure out exactly where I want it. If I try to drill through both at the same time, eh, that can get a little messy and these things kind of go flying all over the place. So that's going to be my first step is drilling through the impeller. So here we are back at the workbench. I actually cut out my four rubber pieces, one for each impeller. And I also got two bolts ready for each impeller as well. Now, these are just like some old junk bolts that I had laying around. I got two washers, one for each side of the rubber piece and a standard bolt to put on the end. 
or a nut to put on the end. Now you could use lock nuts, though so that's getting a little overboard. Um, these will stay on just fine. I've had my impeller kit on there for probably the better part of five years and I have not had a single one come free. So if you really wrench it down tight, you'll be just fine. So these bolts are about a quarter of an inch. And what I'm gonna do is actually take a drill bit that is slightly wider and I'm going to drill into the impeller to make the hole just slightly wider so that way these fit in nice and easy and I have actually have a little bit of play side to side or front to back so I can really wiggle these things into their right spot on that impeller. So today we're actually going to go a little old school. I've got my corded drill because if I try doing this, and I've done this before, if I try doing this with a cordless drill, you're just going to burn through two batteries in about 20 minutes. So. Uh, or less than that, I should say. So I'm gonna use my old school corded drill to drill through these uh, impellers and get the holes. Now I actually have something like a 3 8 size bit here, something a little bit bigger. I wanna have a little extra playroom so I can shuffle these impeller pieces around and get them exactly where I want them. So just finished drilling through the first impeller. You can see I got two nice little holes there, about 3 8 inch in size. And that's gonna allow me a little bit of play so I can move the bolts up, down, side to side, wherever I gotta put them to place them once I just drill the holes through the impeller. So uh, we're looking pretty good. Any metal filings that you may see that are tiny, uh, I'll just vacuum those out later when I'm all done with every, every single one of these impellers. So looking good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We have on one impeller, we have two holes. Slide to the next. Two holes. Slide to the next. Two holes. Two holes. Two holes. Okay, so we got all four impellers drilled out. I got tons of metal shavings down at the bottom. I'm gonna vacuum those out, clean out as much as I can. And then we're gonna get down to business, pretty much matching up the holes onto these, which is a little tricky, but I think the hardest part is now over. Drilling through these impellers is no joke. That is definitely solid steel that you're trying to drill through. And if you don't have a sharp bit, it's gonna take you a while. So uh, that took about 15 minutes to get all those drilled out. On to the next step. So the next step, we're gonna take our rubber piece our impeller and we're going to kind of start to match things up with the edge. I try to go about right to the edge or maybe a millimeter away and that's looking pretty good on that piece right there. Now the question becomes drawing the dot through the underside of the impeller with a sharpie so I know where to drill my holes. All right. So I'm going to get it pretty much where I want it and then I'm going to reach through find it, draw, find the next hole and draw and we should have two dots. I hopefully, hopefully that comes up on camera, hopefully you can see it, but there's my two spots to drill. I'm gonna do one at a time because if I do all four, I'll mix them up. Each hole is drilled just slightly further apart than the last, so this is gonna be the best way to go about it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is ready to go. So now, you can see, ladies and gentlemen, I got daylight coming through both 
of these holes because I matched them up perfectly, all right? So drill the holes through the impeller, drill the holes through the impeller pieces that I'm putting on. So now the next step is to take these bolts, match them up with the right size socket because we're gonna need to get these uh, locked in. By the way, I'm gonna do a whole review probably on this 225-piece uh, socket set from Harbor Freight, these uh, Pittsburgh tools. Oh my God, this is, for a hundred bucks, this is a solid, solid set that has everything you need. It's got the wrenches, it's got the deep sockets or deep wells, it's got metric, SAE, it's got everything. It's got quarter inch, three eighths, half inch. Oh my God, I should just do it right now. But uh, back to business. So finding the right size one, nope, half an inch, perfect. That's our guy. We're gonna take that and run. All right, this one is officially locked on. So uh, these bolts look good. You can see how much of a gap that that is there now. I mean, that is pretty much right to the metal, maybe a millimeter away, but that's good. That's right That's right where we want it. That's gonna throw so much snow. All the snow is just gonna pile up here and it is just going to be pushed out before it can even bond to this metal tube right here. So this is gonna be a great running machine. So I'm going to repeat this step now four times. I gotta do, or three more times I should say. New piece, new impeller, Holes are ready for us. I'm gonna reach under, mark the holes, drill them out, bolt them on, and repeat. There you go. So now, ladies and gentlemen, about 20 minutes after that, of bolting all these on, putting nuts and bolts on the backside, these impellers now come about one millimeter away from the inside of this tube. And fair warning, you will get your hands a little dirty in the process here, okay? So don't be afraid of that. So impeller, and it does, you will notice when you do this, it does make the impeller stick a little bit more, all right? And the motor will take care of that. The motor will do the math, all right? Pushing it around, and there you go. So one thing I did notice about all this when I've been doing these over the years is it does put a tiny bit more strain on the belts underneath these covers. Uh, I have not, I don't want to say I've snap belts. I've only broken one belt over the years, but uh, if these are really tight to the wall, all four of them or all three of them, depending on how many you have, it does put a little bit more strain on the belts. So uh, just kind of watch that. Always check your belts at least once or twice a season just to make sure that they're doing okay. If you do break a belt, it's not that hard of a fix. I'm probably going to do a video on how to fix those anyways down the road anyways. Um, also, uh, make sure that these bolts are snugged down very tight so that way they don't go flying loose. And ladies and gentlemen, we're about ready to get rolling here. So I'm going to give this a test, make sure it all sounds okay. And I'm going to put the chute back on and we should be good to go. So now that the impellers are all set and in place, and right now we're at about 45, maybe 50 minutes into this whole process. So we're not too far in. I mean, this is, this is really not a hard job. Impellers are looking good. Everything's tightened down. Before I put the chute back on, what I'm gonna do is actually grease around the outside edge. And uh, I like using this marine grease. This is by Lucas Oil. No, this is not a paid sponsorship. But maybe in the future, if you wanna consider it, guys. Uh, marine grease, this is good stuff. It's not afraid of water. So what I'm gonna do is just load this up all around the outside edge. That way our chute can dance around without a problem. Looking good. All right, so this snowblower, ladies and gentlemen, is ready to go. The impellers are in place. Everything's bolted down. The chute is back on. We're going to get this engine running. We're going to get it ready to rip. All right, so without further ado, let's give it a pull and get it going.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. All right, we have an impeller kit ready to roll for this upcoming winter. The impellers are in place, they're bolted on. They do make a little bit of extra noise just because uh, there is a little bit of friction going on inside that pipe, all right? And then there is also a little bit of a small smell of burnt rubber and that's from the impellers breaking in and that'll go away after another use or two. So uh, this is ready to rip for my friend and this thing is gonna be one awesome, awesome snowblower, especially with a new engine too. This thing's gonna throw snow so far, probably at least 40 feet and that's usually so, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again, as always. All right, as always, ladies and gentlemen, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, Garage Gear. All right, we got lots more videos coming out on how to handle things around your garage. All right, cool things to try out and do. All right, again, I'm JB. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.